interview somebody who is like a multi-talented, versatile woman. Okay, she, um, she plays multiple roles. She's a mother, she's a sister, she's a scientist, she's an encourager, uh, she's a kingdom builder. Uh, she is somebody who has ignited a movement, a movement amongst women during COVID time. Okay. And she's this amazing, amazing woman who is also by this time tomorrow will be receiving an award. And this award she's going to receive from the Honorable Minister of State for Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, uh, Karnataka. And this award, right, is called as the 2022 Women Torch Bearers of Karnataka Award. And it is none other than our very own uh, Dr. Lata Christie, who will be receiving this award. On behalf of Deborah Rice Movement Sister, we, uh, we congratulate you. We are very proud of you, of your accomplishments. And we are so happy to say that one among us has received this award. So we thank the Lord for you. We are so very proud. And at this moment, right, I would like to ask you a few questions. To just understand how you do it, you are you do so much. You are, um, you um, you you are multitasking. You are a scientist, and we believe scientists are usually you know so busy and into their subject, and they they don't think about anything else, but are so focused and you know so targeted in what they want to do. And yet we see somebody here who has accomplished so much 30 years in the field of being a scientist. And, um, you know, you have written so many books, you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, got so many awards and written, published so many papers. And um, with along with all of that, you are also serving in the kingdom. And uh, not just as an ordinary person, but as somebody who is, uh, you know, encouraging, building and, uh, you know, making things happen in the kingdom. So I think... Um, uh, we would like to know, like, how do you multitask so many things, then you're good at it all. You know, you're not just do doing things, but you're like, excellent. How do you manage that? Thank you, Cardelia, for your kind words. And thank you, dear friends, all my sisters and brothers here for congratulating me. And it's a great pleasure to be part of it. And I feel that we are never alone, even though no one uh, in my family will come with me while I receive award. I feel that my friends would come with me tomorrow. So I'm really happy to be part of this. So coming to Kadilia's question, uh, how I do multitasking and how I'm able to achieve this. So um, it's purely God's grace, but I also would uh, parallelly tell God has given us a natural curiosity about the things that surrounds us. So for me, when I see something new, I get excited. I want to learn something new. Uh, so I often think, why did this happen? And throughout history, mankind has demonstrated focused mental effort can produce miracles. I was wondering how this universe happened. Atheists were telling that there is no God. So let me understand through science whether how the space, time and matter started. And I dwelt into cosmology, astrophysics, and geology. And I found that without a supernatural designer, it can never come into existence. Um, because I was awestruck when I understood that the same gravity that helps in forming the stars also aids in the death of stars. And because of the death of stars, elements come out and because of which we are able to live. So um, it's so wonderful that each and everything, how God formed. And so I started to get excited. And then even I wanted to know whether everything through naturalistic evolution, it came into existence and I found it's not. So that's when I, I did five years research and I wrote that book. Because I fell into serious depression because of uh, domestic violence, I wanted to help such victims because no one can understand them. Only God can understand. So I wanted to write a book and I searched. There are no books in India for the first time. So I wrote it. So that was another research. It was a curiosity again to find whether can we change violent men? Can we protect victims? How can church respond? Coming to my official thing, I understood that 
many of the works we can even delegate and we need not be a manager we should be a leader also i found that leaders empower others and grow together so if you are a real leader you have to impact someone's life and so they feel happy to work with you they don't feel that you will put them down that because of working with you um they will not feel their life as a stressful life so this sort of small things small small thing i understood i should be a servant leader like jesus christ when my children were very young it was very difficult for me that's when i fell into a depression because i was the one who was cooking i was the one who was cleaning the house cleaning the children and dressing them up kill putting them in the school and then running to office and then doing my phd and i fell into serious depression that was true because i couldn't manage so that because i used to get up at 4:30 and then do all these things and finally i got into a depression that's when i understood we should learn to enjoy our work and we should never take stress for anything learn to pray at every moment it's a divine romance we can say um jesus our lord is not a distant god he wants to walk with us every second every moment so when we can feel his presence through holy spirit even driving becomes easy even menial jobs become so beautiful so that's what i slowly learned from the depressive phase that i try to do everything i try to do and you try to uh, measure up in the work and you cannot measure up your boss would never feel that you are measuring up and in the house you won't feel that people you are doing something good so eventually you get down but that is one person who created you who loves you and that is the one who understands so that is way i understood how to do multitasking so now my day starts as i get up i pray i do my exercise and then i start to plan the day what all i am supposed to do today then i tell to god god i cannot do so many things you have to help me out and then i put it down jot it down and then have i finished this can we have it for the next day these are some of the things that help me in multitasking and when my but my when my children were small as i said i found it difficult but it's prayer and god's grace that helped me to bring them up in a very beautiful way and i and i remember um, when they were young it was at that time it was a tension but now that days won't come back when the children are young so i encourage each and every one of you who are having little children enjoy them might be they are troubling you but this is a phase that you won't get they'll become big and so you enjoy that period and never feel as a stress this is my little advice and uh, so kadilia is there anything else next question yes akka you had covered a lot of stuff you had shared about how uh, you delegate you plan your day and uh, most of all you talk to god about your whole day but you were sharing about your younger days you were sharing like how you wanted to do everything and that's when you kind of got overwhelmed and uh, that was a point after a point of being overwhelmed for a long time you probably slipped into depression and that's where you realized right so can i ask you like for all of us here uh, how would you uh, uh, what would you share with us like uh, like we, many of us like myself are young adults here and we do have a lot of things on our plate like uh, work home uh relationships family so many things that we that you know is uh, fighting for our attention like how how what would your advice be to us to manage this like how do we learn to prioritize is there a you know checklist kind of thing that we could follow or how do we do that and so um, now i would say that um uh, there is a problem in um, in the world that is sacred secular divide i would say um some people think that uh, some uh, things that for example sunday going to church or reading the bible that's only sacred and other things are not sacred so you people have to sometimes divide something between sacred and secular so some of the things um are sacred and some of the things are secular so but everything god says it is sacred so he, he says that 
you live your life without differentiating between your inner life and outer life people who look at you very close to you they also should see the same person outside and should see the same person inside so you are one and the same there is no difference he called this for him and to him and by him i think we can bring everything to god and we are knowing fully well that he is we are called by him to him and for him and uh, we can just ask him god these are all the works i have it is not differentiate this is good sometimes we think that giving time to your friend uh, might be a waste of time but before god it's not a waste of time might be that person needs your voice your things so much that day so and uh, and that doesn't come unless you spend time with god uh, how do you spend time with god i some people say i spend 4 hours 5 hours continuously uh, i haven't done like that i have done some days i have done some days earlier so much spending like that but now what i do is i spend my time during driving for with him when i'm doing exercise in the morning i i read listen to the bible words and i read and then um again i just when i do my kitchen work i listen to music and worship so all the time of your life you make it and then you can prioritize like this is the one which you need uh, at that time it is it very important which is very important you can put one two three and keep doing so uh, i wanted to say that when we work for the approval of others we tend to be affected by others praises we want to impress others but i feel if you want to work for god's approval in every way even in our menial jobs then we work very cheerfully and that's what colossians 3:22 says we should work not as men pleases but a sincerity of mind so when we do we we will get approval from god and god will honor those who honor him this is very important god will honor those who honor him and one more thing is a prioritizing again i wanted to bring in this concept of failure i was thinking my life was a failure um so i never wanted to talk about my life any time but now why i talk you know boldly i talk about because failure stories are not taboo in fact it's good to share failure stories more often than success stories so today you are telling about the success story of me getting award tomorrow uh but i also had lot of failure stories those failures made me more tough and those failures taught me something people who rejected me people who put me down help me to look to god when you are in the pit you don't know where to look up except you look up and you find god never treat in your life something you have failed or you have wasted your life nothing is waste so give your life to god that's what my little advice and uh, prioritize sitting before him and happily enjoy each and every moment don't take stress or anxiety because it's god given work and you're doing it for him yeah so beautifully said aka so when you prioritize spending time with god and that may not necessarily be something like i sit one hour and pray for one hour but it is more like when i'm doing my work when i'm driving when i'm cooking i just talk to god i listen to his word and that's how we spend time with god that's practical way to do it and when we when we prioritize that everything else falls in place because you know that god is with you and he's going to help you through because you've already asked him for help right that's awesome i have one last question for you so the one last question is i've heard your testimonies and in your testimonies you have shared like uh, that you are a timid shy person and how is that you know today the dr lata that we see doesn't have any tinge of even shyness or you know uh, the timidness that we that you you have shared that you used to be like so yeah i was timid even i was scared if i if some boy come to talk to me my leg used to shiver i i cannot talk to anyone i was so scared in my college days and uh, for a long time just but when i had to live my life as a single life i started to understand that um, there is some power god has given me and i started to ask him it is not it it did come at once i asked him god um 
is there any way that i can come out of my fear because one day i felt that something is pressing me in the night and i'm not and i'm and i'm unable to tell anything in, i felt that demon has come and then god is telling to speak in tongues i started speaking in tongues for a long time and then somehow my fear left off then i said god this should not happen to me again and god did that and similarly each and everything whenever i felt the one who is in me is much powerful than the one who is in the world in bible we used to read that no never alone i promise never to leave me alone so whenever i felt alone i i used to fight with god you said this you said this and uh, like this slowly 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 but now i don't have a what if at all this life we go we will go to god so whatever we live let us live let us live a good life for god so that's when you come out of all your fear thank you so much for listening to me beautifully said beautifully said aka thank you so much for your time today and sharing with us all your experiences and i hope whoever has listened to this right would take back the 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 life lessons of uh, dr lata and apply it in our own lives so that we don't have to make the mistakes that um sometimes other people have made right history is there for us to learn not to make those mistakes so when dr lata has shared all these things not taking stress and not letting things overwhelm you um yeah so these are things that you may want to take note of prioritizing scheduling things and uh, working out uh, all these stuff 